So I wanted to uh, point out to, to all the residents, thank you for joining us here today. I am a resident of McKinney, and it is my great honor and sincere privilege to represent many of you who are in this area, and I, I don't take that lightly. I enjoy living in the city of McKinney and chose to do that. My great-great-grandfather chose to live out in the country and farm area near Princeton. And uh, what I respect is that we all have that opportunity to make that choice, and we get to choose where we would like to, to set up our homestead. I don't have the uh, insight into to, to know what really is in the hearts or the minds of the council members in, in my city in McKinney, but, but I do have the advantage of knowing their public and, and in some cases some of their private statements. And so we, I know what they've said. And you've heard many of the same things that I've heard. You've heard it said that, that this annexation is necessary and it's critical because county residents use city services and they don't pay for those services and therefore we must annex in order to level the playing field. The reality is, in my opinion, that is, that is code for the city looking to seize tax revenue from folks that currently aren't on their tax rolls. Now, the reality is, and some have pointed this out, there's not a lot of revenue to be had from 99 homes in a very rural area. Now, it's a lot of revenue out of your own pocket. I understand that. But for a city budget. But the reality is the future potential revenue, when those areas are developed in the future and they're all in the city, that's significant. And so, to me, when I hear those comments that folks don't pay their fair share of city taxes and they use the parks and they use the roads, what I hear is, and this is just me, what I hear is the city wants to seize this opportunity to take your tax revenues for their city budget. I also hear the other argument that we need to ensure the development in, in your area, the ETJ, is done in a, in a manner that is organized and strategic and high quality. What I hear when I hear that is the, the city's sense or I hear this desire to, to enforce control and regulation on the behavior of other people and in the development of their own land. Now, again, I don't mean to, I couldn't ever get into their own hearts and minds to, to know what they're thinking, but when I hear those kinds of statements, what I hear is the desire to, to, to take control of other people's land. What I think that fails to, to understand and comprehend is that, quite frankly, Citizens take the best control and management of their own land. And I'll say this uh, quite frankly, as a, as a public servant, as a member of your, govern your government, we don't do as good a job at providing for quality over your land as you do. You take control of your land like I take control of my property. And I think that, that those kind of comments fail to recognize and appreciate and respect that. So, so when I hear that this is really for the benefit of the, the region or for the benefit of the people, I just think that that's uh, a lot of times that's uh, political speak. And I hear really seizing future revenues and seizing control. Now, I've also heard one other comment that's been made, and that is, well, people in the ETJ should understand that they're going to be annexed. In fact, that's what the ETJ is for. It's the signal that someday you're going to be in the city limits. You're going to be in the corporate limits. I reject that thinking outright. There is, there is no pretext under state law that says if you live in the ETJ, you will be in the city limits someday. It's not the purpose of the ETJ. It's not the concept of the ETJ. And quite frankly, it fails to understand that when you live on your property for a significant period of time, and I wrote down some notes today from comments, um, like Joe and Beverly Covington have lived at their location for 46 years, and Mr. Wiggins at 30 years, and Many of you have lived in your locations for many years. You lived there and owned that property before the ETJ was around your property. You predate, predate the ETJ. If you look back at 1960s McKinney with 7,000 people and 13,000 people in the 90s, the ETJ didn't come out to your property. The ETJ is a fluid and a very flexible concept that moves with the corporate limits. And so if you can't purchase property outside the ETJ, knowing that you're protected there because the ETJ will come to get you. And if you can't purchase property in the ETJ and be protected because the city will come to get you, then I say, well, where can you go live if you, if you prefer to choose to live outside the city? I chose to live in the city, but I think you ought to have that right as citizens. All of us ought to have that right if we don't want to live in the city. 
So, uh, so there's a fundamental problem with this, uh, this concept of forced annexation on our citizens. And uh, I think that's the last of my comments, Judge. So my comments 